As the protests over police racism and brutality rumbled across European cities, some activists targeted their own country's colonial history. In Belgium, demonstrators spray-painted a statue of King Leopold II, while in the UK, a statue of 17th century slave trader Edward Colston was toppled and thrown into a river. Well, Anna Lucia Arujo is a historian who teaches at Howard University and joins me from Washington, D.C. Good evening. Many thanks for joining us on the program. Um, whether we're looking at Confederate monuments in the US or these statues representing moments of colonial history in Europe, some would argue that these statues represent, albeit troubled moments, but they represent parts of our history. Uh, in that sense, do you see any part uh, for these statues to play in our modern day life, erected around parks and uh, significant places in our cities? Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, this is a long um, history and uh, is also a long story that, uh, of course, it depends on each, uh, on each country. However, we know that either slavery or colonialism were transnational systems, and part of these systems was also to commemorate and memorialize these individuals who uh, either uh, supported the Atlantic slave trade or uh, who supported the slavery. Then many of these monuments, they were created when these individuals were still alive, uh, and many others, they were indeed uh, unveiled after they were dead uh, since very long, which is the case of the monument uh, honoring Colston and many of the Confederate monuments here in the United States. Then they are not about history. They are about how particular groups, either black, whites, or who identify as black as whites, they uh, perceive their past, they engage with the past, but they are not about history, they are about memory. They are about the particular moment when the monuments were created, usually to sustain, to support uh, a particular agenda of a particular group. In this sense, we can say that many of these monuments, they don't have anymore any any space uh, to be in our societies, but of but course, Anna, toppling them Anna, now is not necessarily the solution uh, everywhere. Absolutely, Anna Lucia, but if they do represent moments of history, but they are still here today, what do they say about our present, that they are still very much present in public spaces? What kind of message does that send out? The, the message that sends out is that the, the ghost of this past, of this colonial past, is still haunting these spaces. Because in many of the places where these monuments are, we do not see any monument honoring black social actors who uh, fought against racism or who fought against the slavery. They, they are there reinforcing this uh, colonial past and messages that reinforce the past that was uh, based on uh, racist ideas. And this is why in many places they needed to go. So is your solution to take these statues down or is there another way that one could progress by keeping these statues but informing maybe the public about the historical context? There are certainly, let's take the example of Bristol. Then since the 1990s, scholars, historians, black concerned citizens, activists, they have been demanding uh, either to contextualize that monument honoring Colston or to create plaques uh, and other uh, devices to contextualize that monument. Nothing was done. Even if there were several interventions that were made in that monument uh, a number of times over the last years, the monument continued to be down. Then at some point, the groups, they take the justice in their own hands. Eh? They find a solution. There is a practical solution to a problem that has not been addressed by public authorities. Yeah, not addressed by public authorities, absolutely. Well, fascinating talking to you. Ana Lucia Arujo there.